Okay, now back to where we left off. We had gotten into convection. We were looking at a combined chapter six and seven. On the board is a summary of kind of where we ended up in your notes from the last time we met. Um, we have flow over a flat plate. It's the simplest possible geometry over a flat plate. What happens is the we're looking at the at the temperature field now because this is M ME415. In ME312 fluid mechanics, we looked at the velocity field. But for the temperature field, the approaching temperature field is T infinity. It's uniform. The plate is sharp edged. It's a knife edge on that side. That's to make the flow very smooth when it comes in. It separates the flow uh, on top of the plate. Doesn't cause any turbulence. So knife edge, x equals zero, call the leading edge. X goes from zero to L. L is the end of the plate, the trailing edge. The plate's maintained at a uniform surface temperature, Ts. The free stream temperature, T infinity. When the flow hits the flat plate, <clears throat> parallel flow, something called a boundary layer starts to build up. A boundary layer is the region where the temperature varies from the surface temperature to 99% of the free stream temperature or the temperature difference. Uh, we call that delta T. The T stands for thermal or temperature. If you don't see a T as a subscript, that delta right there, that's the velocity boundary layer thickness, ME312 stuff. The velocity boundary layer thickness is five times X divided by the square root of the Reynolds number. If you want delta T, you take that delta, you put it in this equation and solve for delta T, the temperature boundary layer thickness. The boundary layer grows as X increases. It gets bigger and bigger as X increases, as this shows. Okay. How does the heat transfer occur? In this case, let's, let's just say the plate's hot and the air's cold. All right, the heat leaves the plate surface at the value of y equals zero. Y is measured vertically upward from the plate surface. At y equals zero, that's the plate surface. The velocity there is zero, ME312, no slip condition, no slip condition. At y equals zero, the velocity of the fluid is zero if the plate's not moving. If the air is not moving at the plate surface, how is heat taken out? Well, we know is by conduction. If the fluid is not moving, that's conduction. If the fluid moves, that's convection. Okay. The heat leaves the plate by conduction. When it gets away from the plate, the velocity picks up and the heat's carried away by convection. So what we did, we equated the conduction leaving the plate to the convection to the fluid. That led to this equation right here. Convection is H A delta T. There's the H. All right, that gave this equation in your notes. We can then make that equation dimensionless by multiplying H by X and divide it by K. We call that special grouping the Nussault number. And we convert this guy to be the Reynolds number. Uh, Reynolds number X u infinity x over nu, parental to the one third. Okay. Now, we can, if, uh, we can also, this is, this is called, let's give it a name here, this is called the local convection coefficient. Local. The local means give me an x, I'll tell you an h. Give me an X, I'll tell you an H. Okay. Now, if somebody says, I want the average convection coefficient, to get H bar, okay, H bar is 1 over X integral 0 to X, HX DX. I put that H into that integral, and I integrate it. And I get
that, or I can convert that to a no salt number. Now, the object's not to get the no salt number, the object's to get the heat transfer, of course. This is, you know, ME415, heat transfer. So you want the heat transfer? QX double prime equal HX TS minus T infinity. Newton's Law of Cooling, Chapter 1. Assuming the surface temperature is higher than the free stream, if it's reversed, then flip flop these two guys. Put the big number minus the small number. Qx double prime is called the local heat flux. Local means depends on x. Heat flux means per square meter. Local heat flux. If I want the heat rate, then I want Q, the heat rate is H a T S minus T infinity. That's the heat rate. This guy's in this guy's in watts. This guy's in watts per square meter. Okay. Uh, you say, well, what, why do you even use the no salt number? Why don't you just use the H equation? Why, why make life more difficult by defining this thing called a no salt number? Well, you know, I told you before, it's because we engineers are in love with dimensionless parameters. Our life revolves around them, we know that. ME311, Moody chart. What's the x axis? It's a dimensionless number called the friction factor, or called the Reynolds number. What's the y-axis? It's a dimensionless number, called the friction factor. What's the parametric curves? They're a dimensionless number, called relative roughness. The Moody chart is a plot of dimensionless parameters. It makes life a lot easier when you do it that way, a lot easier. Uh, was there a hand up? Yeah. What's the bar for? Average, from where to where, from x equals zero to any arbitrary x along the plate. What's the average from here to here, okay? X equals zero, over here, X equal whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in the, uh, at the end of chapter six, it, it's so important in convection especially. It's, it's so important, dimensionless numbers, he gives you a whole table, table six two, of, 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 of these dimensionless numbers. Some are fluids and some are heat transfer. The BO number, we had that, conduction. The Bond number, the coefficient of friction, the Eckert number, the Fourier number, the friction factor, the Grashof number, the Colburn number, the Mach number, the Jakob number, the Nussalt number, the Peclet number, the Reynolds number, the Stanton number, the Weber number. It goes on and on and on. There's more than that, believe me. So, oh yeah, dimensionless parameters are super important. That's why you spend part of ME312 discussing dimensionless parameters, because they're important to us mechanical engineers. And, and the aerospace guys, too. They're the same as we are. So yeah, yeah th these guys are, are super important. So we try and make the equations, if we can, dimensionless. But if you want to, you can go ahead and use these two guys. That's OK. Just to realize, though, that there is a dimensionless uh, grouping of terms. If you're going to plot this, what are you going to plot? Well, I'll tell you. You're going to plot no salt on the y-axis, Reynolds on the x-axis, and maybe the Prandtl number as a family of curves. What are you going to plot up here? This is a tough call now, tough call. I'm going to plot h-bar versus, I don't know, u infinity, or maybe k, or maybe nu, or maybe Prandtl. It doesn't tell me what to plot. When you do dimensions parameters, ME312, they tell you what you should plot, what the functional dependence is, and how many are there important things here? You know, ME312 again. 
How many important things are there? Count them. One, two, three. Count these guys. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, I don't know what to plot. That's why we go through that in ME312, to tell you what's important when you make a plot. All right, on from this now. Everything to the right of that line is only for laminar flow. So this is now a laminar boundary layer. All right, laminar. All laminar. All laminar. Well, of course, the next step is all turbulent. Okay, all turbulent. Here's my picture. Turbulent boundary layer. There it is. Now, for turbulent, oh, things change, of course, as we would expect for turbulent. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of summarize the results. It's obviously very complicated turbulent flow compared to laminar. So for uh, turbulent flow, no salt. X, this is the local no salt number like the boxed equation right here for laminar. The equivalent equation for turbulent, it comes from something called the Reynolds analogy, which relates fluid mechanics for flat plate flow to heat transfer flat plate flow. I showed you before how the equations, the governing partial differential equation, look so similar. They're very similar. That similarity leads to something called the Reynolds analogy, which relates heat transfer to fluids. So this stuff comes from relating the turbulent fluid flow problem to the heat transfer problem. Okay, no salt X equals 0 0.0296. Reynolds to the four-fifths. Prandtl to the one-third. Most of these equations have Prandtl number restrictions on them. They're only valid for certain Prandtl numbers. I'll just tell you, this guy over here is valid for Prandtl greater than 0.6. This guy right here is valid for Prandtl 0.6 to 60. Okay, what's typically uh, air? About 0.7. What's typically water? 5 to 6. So these guys typically apply for air and water at normal conditions. So just have to be a little bit aware of that with your Prandtl number. So you want to always check that. Uh, box that guy in. What is that thing? That is the local Nussault number. Just like this equation over here. Laminar flow, turbulent flow. If you integrate that over an X range, you'll get the average Nussault number. 0 0.037 Prandtl to the one-third. And again, that's for Prandtl number from 0.6 to 60. What if it's not in that range? You go on a search, you find it. It's out there in literature, find it. In our class, it'll always be between 6 and 60. 0.6 and 60, so don't have to worry about that. Okay. All right, all turbulent. Now, we get to the more realistic case that, that occurs quite often. This case is where the flow starts out laminar, but at some point in the flow field, it transits to turbulent. We call that location where it transits to turbulent the critical X value. Laminar turbulent. The flow transits, this is from ME312, the flow transits at a Reynolds number based on X critical 
of we're going to assume 5 times 10 to the fifth, 500,000. So when the Reynolds number gets to that value, it transits from a laminar boundary layer to a turbulent boundary layer. That picture is called mixed flow. Okay, and then if you determine the equation for the average Nusselt number, You do that by integrating over the laminar and the turbulent part of the boundary layer. So you get that final result by integrating from zero to XC, that's laminar, plus the integral from XC to L, that's turbulent. If you follow that through, you'll end up with that boxed equation. And that's what that's what may occur in, in the real world. The flow starts out laminar and transits to turbulent. Uh, there, there's a big difference here. L let's go back to fluid mechanics and look at a uh, piece of pipe here. If the flow coming in has a Reynolds number based on diameter of 1,000, we know that in that case, the critical Reynolds number is somewhere around 2,000, 2,100, or 2,300, whatever. Different books have different numbers because nobody knows exactly what the number might be. So typically, maybe it's, let's just say 2,000. Any flows less than uh, 2,000, we'll call it laminar. Greater than 2,000, it's in transition, we'll call it turbulent, though. So I go down. I go down here five meters. And I say, what's the Reynolds number here? Well, if the properties didn't change, the Reynolds number didn't change. The velocity didn't change, conservation of mass. The diameter didn't change. What's the Reynolds number based on? That guy didn't change, conservation of mass, assuming the temperatures didn't change. That guy didn't change, properties. Uh, he won't change. He won't change. He won't change. Yeah, a thousand, thousand. Pipeline carrying oil. Alaska oil pipeline. From the North Slope to Valdez. Hundreds of miles long. Hundreds of miles long. Oil leaving North Slope in the pipeline. It didn't change diameters. It won't change temperatures too much because it's being kept at the same temperature. If it was 1,500 at the North Slope, It'll be 1,500 in Valdez, where they ship the oil out. Totally different than external flow here. What's the Reynolds number? My finger is zero. Reynolds number here, 500,000, a million, 1.5 million. Yeah, the Reynolds number keeps going up as we go to the right as X inc. Why? Because look, look what the Reynolds number is. It has the X in it. Oh, I had that here somewhere, right? There, no. Just over here. Look at the difference. That's X, that's D. Does D change? We're assuming not. Does X change? Oh, of course. So that's the difference in flow in a pipe like this and flow over a flat plate like that. Um, generally, we're going to assume that flow starts off laminar and transits to turbulent unless told otherwise. If you're told it transits to turbulent, this is your problem. Some problems in the textbooks will say for homework. Assume the flow starts off turbulent from the leading edge. Okay, that's this picture. If they don't say anything like that, it's this picture. You assume that picture. Okay. How do you get flow from the leading edge to be turbulent? Well, if the flow approaches this front desk from the windows, and the flow, this is a flat plate. This is a sharp edge, a knife edge. 
the flow hits that knife edge, x equals zero, and the boundary layer starts to grow like this. If I take a fine wire, maybe a 16th inch in diameter, fine wire, and I put a glue line down here, and I glue that fine wire on the edge of that flat plate, right at the leading edge right here. I put that little round wire right there. Bam! The flow goes turbulent from the leading edge. The flow hits that wire. It's no longer a sharp edge, and it goes boom, turbulent. This is what you do in a laboratory environment. Or I get a glue stick, and I put a glue line down here, and I sprinkle sand on it. So I, or you can, you, you can, you can glue a strip of sandpaper on there, whatever you want to do. As soon as that flow, let's say of air, hits that sandpaper, boom, turbulent from there on out. The sandpaper trips it. It's called artificial uh, turbulence, tripping it. So if the problem says the boundary layer has been artificially tripped to turbulent at the leading edge, that's your picture. You've got a tractor trailer truck on the highway, and you've got the uh, cab. When that flow comes up over here and hits that point right there, that is not a sharp edge, okay? Because typically, there's a rounded piece that they rivet on there like that. They put rivets in there. Oh, those rivets act like sandpaper. They trip the flow to turbulence. So in the real world, it might happen all also, where you'd analyze this up here boundary layer as a turbulent boundary layer, just like you would with artificially tripping it by sandpaper or by a fine wire. OK, so back to here. There's your, there's your three pictures. There's all the equations you need to solve everything on these kind of problems. OK, so we will do, um, we'll do that one first. All right. So we're going to take water flowing over a flat plate. All right, so here's our flat plate. It's 50 centimeters in length, 50 centimeters. OK, it's all water. So here's our boundary layer. Uh, we have approaching this water with a velocity u infinity t infinity. And the plate surface is kept at a temperature 40 degrees C. And uh, t infinity is cooler at 20 degrees C. And u infinity is 6 meters per second. Water. OK, W, the width of the plate is uh, 6 tenths meters, uh, 60 centimeters. This is the plate width. OK. And we're going to be asked a lot of questions about heat transfer. So just like it back in fluids, the first thing you do in pipe flow is find out, is the flow in the pipe laminar or turbulent? Uh, you find out here where nothing was said about artificially tripping the boundary layer, so this is where we start. We assume it might be this picture, or maybe it'll be all laminar. I don't know yet. I won't know until I find out where the flow trips to turbulent. So my first step is to find F, X sub C. So X sub C. All right, our value Reynolds nu over u infinity. And uh, let's see, okay, Reynolds number, I know five times 10 to the fifth, that's the critical Reynolds number. Uh, u infinity, I know that's six meters per second. I've got to find nu. All right, so. I go to the back of the book, what table, table A6. Properties of water. Oh, 
Okay, um, I can have a temperature now, average temperature, T average, okay, is six, uh, 20, 20 plus 40 divided by 2, 30 degree K, 30 degree C, which is 303K. So I go to the back of the book, 303K. Okay, now if you remember the back of that book, that table, this is what it has in it. It has temperature, then it has VF, then it has VG, then it has mu F, then it has KF, then it has Prandtl F. It's like a thermal table for water. There are two subscripts on everything. There's a V, F, a V, G, a mu, F, a mu, G, a K, F, a K, G, a prandtl, F, a prandtl, G. From thermal, the F means saturated liquid, the G means saturated vapor. We're going to assume water behaves like a saturated liquid. Good assumption. So we go to the average temperature and put that in here. Uh, I need new. Bad news. It's not in the table. That's okay. I can do it one of two ways. I also know that the Reynolds number is equal to rho u infinity x over mu. There's the mu column right there. Or I can go ahead and find uh, nu if I want to. Uh, nu equal mu over rho. I don't see a rho column in that table. No, you don't because this is a thermo table. Crack your thermal book open. You won't find density of liquids, but you will find little v called the specific volume, and then you know that the specific volume is a reciprocal of density. All right, so this guy right here is 1 over rho f. All right, now I got it. So this becomes rho times mu. There is a mu column. There is a 1 over rho column. There we are. That's how we get it on that table. For air, it's easy. They give you nu for air in the back of the book. They give you mu for air, but not water because it's a thermo table. Okay, um, so let's get that Reynolds number then. It's, uh, that nu is 78.2, 10 to the minus 8. 78 times 10 to the minus 8. So x sub c, I'll put x sub c right here. x sub c comes out to be 0, 6, 5, 2 meters. 6.52 centimeters. Okay, so now I know the flow is going to transist to turbulent when the x value is about six and a half centimeters. What's this guy? 50. Wow. It's going to transist right about here. There is x sub c right about there. Six centimeters, 6.52 centimeters. At that point, the flow transists to turbulent. All right, now I know that's my roadmap. Here's my three choices. Which one do I go to? I got this guy. It's mix flow. Okay, so now I know I've got mix flow problem. Um, could it change? Well, I'll, okay, I'll change it for you. Let's assume for just a minute that the velocity is six tenths meters per second. Okay, uh, that's going to make things different by a factor of ten. That's going to make x sub c fifty. 65 centimeters. X sub C now, 65 centimeters where it transists. How long is the plate? 50 centimeters. What's my picture now? Oh, it's all laminar. Now my picture is this one over here. Because the velocity is so low, 0.6, it makes my transition X sub C 65 centimeters. So it depends on things, what you're going to get. When I make it six, six meters per second, okay, it's mix flow. All right, number one, uh, we're going to find um, the
the local heat flux at x equal 1 centimeters. All right. All right, let's see, one centimeter. There's my picture. At one centimeter, I'm in laminar flow. Okay, laminar flow. What do I want? I want the local heat flux. Where's that? There's the word right there. I want that guy right there, local heat flux. What do I need? All I need is that H sub X. How do I find it? Look up here till you find it. Ah, oh, right there. There it is, H sub X. Okay, so H sub X, 0 0.332 K, quantity U infinity over nu X to the one-half, Prandtl to the one-third. Yep. You do all the stuff. Put all the stuff uh, in there. Uh, you've got the properties. You know what x is, 0.01. Uh, U infinity is 6. And you end up with uh, h sub x, 98.82 watts per square meter k. I want the heat flux. There's the boxed equation. Qx double prime. And that gives me 197.6 kilowatts per square meter. That's called the local heat flux. That means that heat flux, I'll put my finger on it, right there. At that point, right there, the heat flux is that number. Right there. Okay. Now, let's say we want to find the heat rate over the laminar part of the boundary layer. Okay, that's in watts. When I say heat transfer or heat rate, that means watts. I want watts. There's watts right there. Put a bar over that guy right there. It's H bar. That's a bar. Yeah. Come. Where does the, uh, besides the one centimeter just being in the laminar flow, where does that one centimeter come into the HX equation? The HX equation. Oh, uh, over here. There. Oh, the HX equation. There. Wait, yeah, there's the HX equation. Oh, right there, okay. There it is, there it is. Oh, U times, U times X. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay, uh, laminar, laminar, okay, picture's over here. What do I want for the heat rate or heat transfer, Q in watts? What do I need? H bar. Where is H bar? Right there. Okay, there's H bar. Again, laminar. So H bar, 0 0.664, Reynolds X to the 1 half, oh, no, not Reynolds X, we're up, we're above there. Uh, K, same thing. Just so you know, for this guy here, we put x equals 0 0.01. For this guy here, this is x critical uh, over the laminar part out to x critical. And um, our x critical was 0 0.0652. OK. So h bar 
comes out to be 7740 and our Q the area is now it's the area for the laminar part of the plate 0.0652 times the plate width W 60 centimeters times 40 minus 20 that comes out to be 6056 watts Just to remind you again that when you plot H X versus X from the laminar equation over there, I had this on the board last time, it looks like this. Notice these two equations. One is a three, three, two, one's a six, six, four. That's the only difference in those two equations. This guy, the average is twice the local. The average H is twice 664, the local 332. So if this is the X value I'm looking at from zero to that X, the local value is right there. That's the local value, H sub X. If I want to find the average H, I double that value. So I take twice, take this, take this, There's H bar. H bar is two times the local value at that X value. You don't need to use that, but it's, it's just easy to remember. The average value is twice the local value. For what? Laminar flow only. Laminar flow only. Where'd the two come from? Oh, you know, when you integrate integrating uh, x to the one-half dx, what happens? There's a one-half comes out of there, which means you multiply by two, so that, that's where it came from. When you integrate, that, that two pops out of the integration. Okay, now, of course, the next step is turbulent part. That's the laminar part. Find the local heat flux at the end of the plate. Okay, that's right here. I want to find the local heat flux right where my finger is in the plate. What's the boundary layer there? Turbulent. Okay, turbulent. There's the local right there. H X times X over K. That's the no salt number. Equal O nine O two nine six. Reynolds to the four fifth. Randall to the one-third. I know everything. X is 0 0.50. In the Reynolds number, that X is 0 0.50. And I solve for HX. The Reynolds number, I'll just tell you what the Reynolds number is here.
3.84 10 to the sixth. That's what goes in for the Reynolds number there. Then you get an H sub X, which is 11770. Typically, those H's for turbulent flow are bigger than for laminar flow because turbulence creates better heat transfer. If you want better heat transfer, make the flow turbulent. Okay, so we got that now. Now we want the local heat flux. Okay, now, these boxed equations here, these, this is chapter one stuff, chapter one. What it means is these guys are valid no matter what. These guys are valid for all three cases. All laminar, all turbulent, mex flow, same two Q equations. Heat flux and heat transfer. So, one more time. Qx double prime equal hx t s minus t infinity. And this guy gives me 235,000 watts per square meter. Kilowatts per square meter. That's the heat flux at the location at the end of the plate, x equal 50 centimeters. All right, let's find, this is what we're, what we're mostly interested in as engineers. What's the heat transfer over the whole plate? Over the whole plate. Okay, here it is. It laminar and turbulent. Oh, that's mixed flow. Mm -hmm. Mixed flow, laminar and turbulent. So, mixed flow. Okay, only one equation. There it is. The salt bar L. Zero point zero three seven Reynolds to the four fifth minus eight seventy one Prandtl to the one third. That Reynolds number at L. I got it right there. There it is, right there. Three point eight four ten to the sixth. Solve for H bar, the average convection coefficient over the whole plate length, 12,840. Now I want the heat transfer. Go to your two Q equations. Pick out the one you want. Do you want heat flux? No. I want heat transfer in watts. There it is. H bar A. Ts minus T infinity, H bar. The area now, how long is the plate? 50 centimeters, okay. What's its width? 60 centimeters, okay. Total heat transfer over the whole plate, 77,040 watts. I'll just say 77.0 kilowatts. All right, so we've got that now. So far, we uh, 
used this equation, this equation, this equation, and this equation. Okay. So now comes another question. Um, I want to find heat transfer in the turbulent boundary layer. In the turbulent boundary layer. You don't really go to any of those boxed equations over there. You, you say Q for the turbulent part equal Q total minus Q laminar part. Q for the total, or Q for the, for the turbulent, is the total heat transfer minus the laminar contribution. Okay, total, 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 right here, 77,000. Minus the laminar, uh, laminar flow right there, 7740. Did I, did I get it wrong? Which one? The laminar. Oh, laminar, oh, okay. Uh, where's my laminar? Here? Oh, let's see, H bar, blah, 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 thank you. 6056, good. 6056, and when you do that, you get 70,984 watts. Yeah. The only important equations on flat plate flow are over there on that side of the board. Everything you need to solve homework or problems like this. I'll do one more. Somebody says, I want to find a heat transfer uh, from x equal 5 centimeters to x equal 20 centimeters. What do I do? Just like part E, Q from 5 to 20 equal Q from 0 to 20 minus Q from 0 to 5. 0 to 20, uh, there to there. What is it? Mixed flow. There's H bar. Okay, got it. Uh, 0 to 5. Oh. Laminar, H bar. There it is. Done deal. I can ask you to find the heat transfer from I don't care where to I don't care where. From 30 to 49, from 20 to 35. The same way I did it here. Figure out where you're going from zero to here, laminar, from zero to here, mix flow. Get the right H bar, mix flow, H bar, laminar, plug them in there. You got it. So, there's not much more a person could ask you about this than what's on the board right now. This whole board is the whole story of flat plates in Chapter 7. Okay? The homework you've got involves different parts. Some, I've got like two problems, laminar flow, two problems, Mech flow and a problem which is, uh, which is uh, all turbulent flow. So you can practice all three things for homework. Okay, we're going to stop here because next time it's flow over cylinders, flow on the outside of cylinders. Okay? So.